Hundreds more individuals are fleeing their residences in the disputed area of Nagorno-Karabakh. Armenian authorities claim that around 28-0 people had departed after Azerbaijan ceased. Control Nagorno-Karabakh in a military operation a week ago, global leaders and the United Nations were pushing for the refugees to be safeguarded and have greater access to humanitarian aid. Automobiles, buses, and trucks from Nagorno-Karabakh into Armenia the individuals trapped within are fatigued. Many spent the night on the road. They worry they are abandoning their ancestral lands for good afternoon not know that we are stray dogs. In Nagorno-Karabakh, many Armenians feel they have no option but to pack everything and leave. The area was encircled by Azerbaijan for nine months before its military swooped in a week ago. Authorities in Azari maintain that their alleged combination of terrorism did not target civilians in the Republic of Azerbaijan. Consequently, as a result of terrorist acts, initially, the earth didn't touch it, it was in a city in a significant city, and it was on a natural boundary. And the military of Azerbaijan has so far primarily used to guide police forces. We are also in closer accord with our beliefs touch with the Armenian community through locally based representatives' vehicles on the ground clog the road. Everything needed for the voyage is missing, including gasoline in this catastrophe caused. When as everyone waited, a gas tank burst into a gas station. Numerous people were injured, and many more were injured. A few of the victims received treatment, and Russian peacekeepers evacuated. Based in Nagorno-Karabakh, ever since Azerbaijan took a break, the majority of the enclave is Armenian separatist troops in 2020. After decades of inter-ethnic conflicts, Armenians feel unsafe. When the exodus gathers pace, this father is reunited with his daughter on the border on the side of Armenia, a brief respite during a trying time of desperation. Right now, we're headed to the corner store, town near the border with Arminius journalist Neil will speak with Azerbaijan. What else do we know about at this point? The fallout from that massive explosion at a gas station in other words, we're still processing exactly what occurred and what was the victim count. I mean, yesterday I was conversing with a friend who arrived from the he had been in the car when it had just arrived. When his friend was in the capital called him and informed him of the explosion, as well as his friend, who had been a witness to it, reporting seeing. Over there were 100, um, burned bodies on the ground. So the number of deaths resulting from that appears to have been an absolute horror. What happened, Neil? There is a huge there are people moving. Around there, there are discussions between the Armenian officials as well as the Azerbaijan government's policy regarding integration. However, what is compelling racial Armenians to get out of Nagorno-Karabakh? If you talk to people who are coming out, I mean they all have the same ultimate reason why they've gone. Because, you know, the Azerbaijani government has starved and blocked them for nine months, and then last week Shaw and bombed them, killing hundreds of people, and still is not allowing any humanitarian aid or any international organizations to access the region, and so. These people say there's no way we can possibly live under a government that starved and then killed us, and we'd better get out now before we lose the chance to do it. There is a chance here that this is no longer some or a quarter, but perhaps a majority of ethnic Armenians leaving their homeland. I mean, I believe it will be very close to what the advisor to the president of Nagoro, Karabakh, claimed that 99.9% .9 of people there will leave. I think it's going to be overwhelming. Exodus, you know, everyone there is fully aware of it. It's been forcefully reminded numerous times of how the government of Azerbaijan feels towards them, and people are unwilling to take any risks. Is Neil then capable of coping with Armenia? The massive, enormous amount of refugees, I mean, they're struggling, they're struggling, and I can now begin to hear the first stories about people you know, having trouble finding a place to live. It's been getting a little crazy, eh? I'm simply entirely sure how nice. The government's intentions here have been, at any rate, 120 zero refugees for a nation with less than 3 million people. Armenia is home to a massive million people, a sudden burden to take on, so it's definitely becoming challenging. You mentioned the EU's hosting discussions between Azerbaijan and Armenia, in addition to considering what role the European Union and the world community take this again. First off, give more assistance to Armenia, and they are now addressing this refugee crisis. They can also offer some form of credible deterrence against Azerbaijan. Even as otherwise suggested, it may very well launch a military invasion against Armenia itself to take the so-called Zagazord Corridor, and so the West is capable of going beyond mere words, are aware that they present a threat of credible repercussions for action and actual repercussions for Azerbaijan if it continues to carry out military operations and aggression. What do you bring to the fact, in conclusion, that Azerbaijan prohibits foreign observers from entering the area? I want people to know what's occurring there, they don't want anyone to know the dreadful situation that's not over, as they claim. The reintegrations it's its ejection of this population is absent, and what is present is the situation for the persons who are nonetheless absolutely dire, you know, a very poor. Humanitarian circumstances, a lot of hunger, and harmed people, and Azerbaijan does not want the world to be aware of this and is continuing to mislead them. If you love the video, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel.